Coming up in the news, if you have an opinion on how to improve Highway 6 in Texas Parkway in Missouri City, we'll tell you how to make your voice heard. Plus, the city reports on how it spends your tax dollars and we'll have the details. And youngsters who aspire to be the next great golfer will get a chance to show their stuff on the course. We'll tell you how. Hello and thank you for watching in the news. I'm Bobby Bracken. Those stories in a moment. Well, we're out here at Community Park where this year's Bunny Hop will be held on Saturday, April 16th. We'll have more details later. But first, Benny Keith, one of the nation's largest food distributors, held a groundbreaking ceremony on Tuesday, March 22nd at the 80-acre property that will house its distribution headquarters on Cravens Road near South Gessner Road. The company's planned 400,000 square foot warehouse and other buildings will serve Southeast Texas and Louisiana and create about 300 jobs. It expects to start operations in the spring of 2013. Isn't this great? Huh? You know, Robbie, it goes back to uh, kind of a marriage situation. You got to go through a dating period and then you go through the engagement period and then we set the date for the wedding. And boys and girls, we're here for the wedding today. <laughs> And it's a great day for us. By originating deliveries from here in Missouri City, we're going to eliminate about 50 trucks at night. The trucks that are going up and down I-45 to Fort Worth and back, and uh, back and forth on I-10 to San Antonio and back. That's going to result in about 2,000 fewer gallons of diesel burnt per day, or about a half a million gallons of less fuel burnt per year. With the advent of these automated storage and retrieval systems, uh, but you still, even with those, you still have to have good, high quality workforce. And uh, that's something that we are very pleased to have found here in Missouri City. The company delivers produce, meats, and other foods and equipment to restaurants, hospitals, schools, nursing homes, and other industrial businesses. And we are very fortunate to have them. And now the council wrap up. Andrea Guy has the recap of some significant actions taken at City Council meetings. We bring you highlights from the March 21st meeting. Council members received an update from City Manager Frank Simpson on the effective and efficient use of city resources. They include the following. Recent data, including 2010 census figures, 2010 sales tax reports from the state controller, tax rate information, net taxable valuations, and the number of employees from the most recent financial information on the city website shows that despite the challenging economy, Missouri City staff continues to provide high quality services to residents. From 2005 to the present, the city's commercial tax base has increased from a little more than 15% to about 23%. The city has benefited from commercial development. We've added more than 2 million square feet of commercial space and have added more than 800 jobs. And of those 800 jobs, 500 are non-retail. We're not talking about the, the fast food jobs or anything like that. 500 of them are full-time industrial warehouse commercial type of non-retail jobs. And those numbers do not even include Benny Keith. And other cities look to Missouri City as a leader in the region and the state. Simpson further explained that the city has achieved these results through the hiring of competent and dedicated employees, the smart use of technology, and good business practices and decisions. To ensure continued progress, the city will continue following these practices. In action that will improve safety for motorists, Council awarded a $2.45 million contract to Marcon Services for intersection improvements along State Highway 6, including the following intersections. Murphy Road, University Boulevard, Lake Olympia Parkway, Siena Ranch Drive, Siena Plantation, Lakeshore Harbor Drive, Tremel Fresno Road. The improvements will include additional left turn lanes, dedicated right turn lanes, and new signals. You deserve the congratulations you received tonight. Thank you. Council members and staff also recognized an employee who is retiring after 30 years of service to the city. 
Robert Adolphus began his career at the city in 1979 and worked in the Public Works Department before assuming his current position as Deputy Building Official in the Planning Department. Director of Development Services Gary Smith paid tribute to his co-worker. He's positively influenced the operation and the development of the city. He'll be missed within our department. He'll be missed by the city and he'll be especially missed by his co-workers. Council members also approved a change in the contract for the city's solid waste, residential and municipal trash service and recyclable material service between the city and Republic Waste Services. The revision provides an option to add two new service level selections for bulk waste collection to two days per month instead of one day for those with automated service. An additional cost will be $1 more per month per customer account for those currently with automated service. A change in service level by the Homeowners Association or a Municipal Utility District can be made starting now until the August change of election deadline. And council members approved an ordinance on the first of two readings on a request by T-Mobile West for a 140-foot telecommunications tower to be located on property owned by Global Geophysical Services. In a change that will affect a second planned Walmart in Missouri City, council members approved an ordinance enlarging the reinvestment zone number two to include portions of the rights-of-way of Lakeshore Harbor Drive and Vicksburg Boulevard. Council members approved a resolution opposing a House bill relating to the approval of certain water control and improvement district actions by municipalities. And that's your council wrap up. The following day you can see a summary of all council action on the city's homepage under Council Connections. Thank you, Andrea. And speaking of intersection improvements along Highway 6 in Missouri City, you've probably seen the markers that are placed where raised medians will be constructed in the next few months. The overall project involves construction of raised medians on Highway 6 from Voss Road to Teal Bend, south of the Fort Bend Toll Road. During the next three months, Missouri City construction will occur from Dulles Avenue to Murphy Road. Work should be completed by July. The medians will be constructed within the existing center turn lane. Where space allows, there will be median openings to allow turns into commercial areas. The three lanes northbound and southbound will remain open during construction, with intermediate turn lane closures at traffic signals. Overall, the medians will improve driver safety by reducing conflict points which can occur with turning movements that use a center lane for turning. The planning process began in 2006. Between then and 2010, four public hearings were held to obtain citizen feedback. The City and the Texas Department of Transportation have scheduled a public hearing to gather your input on proposed raised medians on Texas Parkway from 3rd Street to Cartwright Road. The hearing will be held on Tuesday, April 12th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Community Center, 1522 Texas Parkway. Drivers are constantly faced with distractions such as talking or texting while driving. April is National Distracted Driving Awareness Month and the Texas Department of Transportation is launching the Talk Text Crash Campaign to encourage Texans to put down their cell phones while driving. Missouri City has an ordinance that bans texting while driving. Motorists cannot use a wireless communication device to view, send, or compose an electronic message while driving and while stopped at stop signs and traffic signals. Those who violate the ordinance can be fined up to $500. According to TxDOT, distracted driving is becoming increasingly common and dangerous, with nearly one in four crashes involving driver distraction. Missouri City cleared 381 warrants and netted over $86,000 during a statewide warrant roundup from February 19th through March 13th. The collections included fines, court costs, and bonds. With the amount of jail time served, known as face value, the city's roundup effort totaled more than $141,000. Most of the 381 warrants that were resolved involved traffic cases. If you want a first-hand look at how the city's police and fire departments work, you can sign up for the city's free Citizens Police and Fire Academy, which begins Tuesday, April 12th. The deadline to register is April 8th. 
This free program is open to city residents and applicants will receive hands-on training in public safety operations. Classes will be held from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday for six weeks at the Missouri City Public Safety Headquarters, 3849 Cartwright Road. You can get applications from Public Safety Headquarters or on the city's website, MissouriCityTX.gov, by clicking on For Residents tab and selecting Forms and Applications. After completing the Academy, members are eligible to join the Missouri City Police and Fire Auxiliary and or the Citizens Response Team. For more information, please call 281-403-8705. The Quail Valley Golf Course participated in the Shell Houston Open Golf Tournament recently. A group of volunteers from the city's golf course served as marshals for one of the holes on the golf course during the week-long event. Speaking of golf, the Junior Golfers Program at Quail Valley Golf Course is offering two junior camps. Camps will be held on April 9th and 10th, also on May 14th and 15th. The cost is $115 per junior golfer. The classes include technique instruction, rules, etiquette, and playing on the course. All children ages 6 to 12 are eligible. Parents can sign up their junior golfers by calling 281-403-5910. The camp is a Southern Texas PGA Little Linksers approved program with golfers who complete the camp eligible to play in the STPGA junior golf events. Well, it's spring, and that means it's time to go hopping down the bunny trail at Missouri City's 23rd Annual Bunny Hop, held right here at Community Park. And if you look behind me at that pavilion, that's where you'll have a chance to take a photo with the bunny. The event is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, April 16th at Community Park, 1700 Glen Lakes. Children will receive a set of plastic eggs at the end of the trail. The play area at the event will feature slide bounce houses, a trackless train, and you're asked to bring your camera for photos with the bunny. The Missouri City Recycling Center has reopened after undergoing upgrades that will enable residents to easily access bins and improve the look and function of the facility. All your recyclables, paper, plastic, and household metals can now be placed in one container. Improvements to the center at 1919 Scanlon Road were funded through a grant from the Houston Galveston Area Council of Governments. In days after the renovated recycling center reopened for residents, the city's community garage sale and e-recycle event was held on March 26. And we leave you now with some green scenes from that Saturday. Thank you for watching In the News. opportunity to uh, take care of things that you've been kind of hanging on to and not knowing what to do with and when I saw the opportunity I took it. Oh got a bunch of electronics and hazardous materials to get rid of we've been waiting for a time to do that. My computers I need to dispose of so uh, myself and my sister both stay in Missouri City and uh, we're here just to pretty much just to get rid of stuff that's been sitting around. I have riddles and um People leave paint in the house, so I put it in my garage, and then I also use paint. And uh, so when I, you know, have something left and uh, I'm not going to use it, I store it in the garage. And this is an opportunity to get rid of it. Save the earth, stop global warming. I love it. Got to keep them coming.